Well, here we go. Once that camera stops shaking about, I should be alright. Uh, right, okay, so I'm um, I'm hoping to get this video uh, cracked the next year too. It's been um, it's been too bad up north here, up north east here. It's, uh, the sun's just starting to go down now. That's why I've, I've had to turn my camera around. Uh, I did a recording last night, but unfortunately, when I checked on um, checked the video online, that um, there was a big line down off the sunshine. Uh, no doubt, a lot of you will be um, a bit jealous because uh, the high winds and the rain you've had down south or the east, the southeast, it's been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, yesterday was red hot, uh, a bit chill at the wind, and today it's been absolutely fantastic. Is it here? It's a bit blowy the wind again. We're focused for some heavy rain tonight, but. Uh, We'll get that do over and done with, and then uh, hopefully we'll get a nice um, we'll get a nice weekend. Uh, tonight's video, right? Well, it's cucubits time, uh, and cucubits. Well, it's a family of um, cucumber, courgette, marrow, squashes, melons, and of course melons be my favourite, and that's what I'm be planting tonight. Well, a lot of people uh, get a bit panicky when they talk about melons. Or grown melons. It's uh, really a few simple steps, and uh, they are quite easy. You know, if you just um, if you just take these few simple steps. Now I've just sown uh, just ten here, and this is um, melon arava. This is an English melon, um, and uh, I love growing these. You can grow them in the polytunnels. You can grow them in greenhouses, uh, cool frames, or a nice sheltered spot. But uh, they're not a big melon, just a nice uh, medium-sized one. And uh, as I say, just a few easy steps. Uh, you know my compost, um, multi-purpose, a good handful of sharp sand, and that's uh, paramount in this mixture. You must have a good bit of sharp sand in, because melons hate sitting in damp conditions. So you want a nice free draining soil, and that's why I use a multi-purpose. Excuse me, and a bit of sharp, good bit of sharp sand with it to make it a good free draining mixture. Uh, now the seeds, when you're sowing the seed, it's the same with uh, any melon or cucumbers. You get a nice, good sized seed. And I always put them on the head. That's point, point up, point down, or on the side. Never on the flat, because if you put them on the flat, a lot of the moisture that's retained in the compost, you'll end up uh, rotting it off. So never put your seeds on the flat. Either put them on the side or top the toe on the pointed end. And then a little bit of perlite on top, fine, and there we are. No problem. Um, now, always wait this time of the month, uh, early May, beginning of May, because your temperatures are up. I know it's been cold outside, and we had actually it was a bit frosty this morning down here, but um, I popped in last night and I put the heater back on. I haven't had the heater on for about uh, two weeks up, up north here, but last night I popped it on because. Uh, I had a feeling that the temperatures was going to drop too far down, and the last thing I want to do is to start spoiling me tomorrow's. So, uh, anyway, they're in. The melons in. Now, I treat the melons exactly the same as what I treat my cucumbers. Uh, it's not hard. Um, I've just sown uh, some telepathy. Now, they're well through. Uh, I sowed another trayful of uh, levita. They're in. The cucumbers are treated exactly the same way. Put them on the sides, push them down and just a little, little compost on the top and it should come away quite easy, no problem. Um, and that's uh, Spidey of getting them away. Melons for growing, um, they don't like too rich of a soil. Um, I think you need a, a your readings want to be between 6 and 6.5 to get a good uh, a good crop. Everybody keeps saying you need a very rich deep compost. Well yeah you do. You, what I like, to, I like to feed my soils first. Um, and what I mean by that is plenty of plenty of horse manure, plenty of compost, um, plenty of seaweed, plenty of home grown composts, all the bins, all that goes in, everything. And uh, rather than feed the plants, feed the soil first, get your soil built up, nice deep rich humus, get all them bugs, um, all them microbes working together, it breaks everything down and you get a really good fibrous mixture. Yeah, that's free draining and the, the melons will go straight into there, just on a little bit of a hump or a hill. Pop them in there, but the last thing you want to do is to have them uh, anywhere where they'll waterlog. Um, with some nice free draining, so as I say, I'll, I'll probably pop mine on a couple of trellises in the bottom of the tunnel, uh, grow the melons up there, uh, and uh, hopefully it'll just 
hang down the side of the trellis. The last thing you want to do is leave your, your melons sitting on a, a wet surface soil, compost or anything like that. Even if you put a bit of the old slate or a brick under them, just to keep them off that compost. But uh, as I say, if you grow them up the trellis, it's a lot easier because you get the air under them. Uh, nice, plenty of fresh air on them and you know, it should keep them nice and clean. They've got a couple of pests and you've got a couple of diseases that um, that will attack these. Uh, Boitrous, mildew is one of the worst ones. Now, the, the way I get around that, I can, I can do two or, two or three things. Uh, I can do a, a tea, a chamomile tea. You all know me. I, I love spray my seedlings with a chamomile tea. I do the same thing with the cucumbers and the melons. Once it breaks surface, give them a good soak with chamomile. And then once they start growing in that in that grown position, you can uh, give them a spray of milk, fresh milk. Um, what I do, I make it five to one. Spray them on. Never spray them on the dead and when the sun's on them. It's early morning or late evening. And a uh, bit of milk or a uh, baking soda, a bit of baking soda in the water. Spray them with that and it keeps the mildew away. Or at least it'll stop the mildew from spreading. Um, the only way to keep that at bay is, to, as I say, keep plenty of fresh air in them. I have my tunnel doors open all the time. I mean, you're getting into May now, so, you know, get the doors on the hooks, let them beasties in, let the bu bugs, the bees, the hoverflies, they'll all come in. They'll do your pollination quite easy. I've never had a hand pollinate my melons yet. Um, as I say, let all the bugs and beasties in, and they, they'll do the pollination for you, no problem. But uh, that's them away. Um, there's only one more thing I had to do tonight, and that was to get the, um, if I can find them, um, I popped them in. I got another packet of melon seed uh, from a good friend. Uh, if I can find them, which again once it disappeared, um, I popped them in this tree. And I'm trying to find the packet, but unfortunately, it's. Um, it's disappeared. I will find it tomorrow. And of course, these are um, Korean melons. Now, uh, Rod Halliwell, um, from down the Midlands, down south there, sent us a pack of, uh, of Korean melons last year. Now, I've not grown them before, but um, I'm going to grow them exactly the same as my melons. Uh, they're a bit smaller, but I'm hoping I'm going to treat them exactly the same way as mine, and hope I'm going to get a good crop of them. So, Rod. I'll, uh, I'll keep you updated on them Korean melons, and uh, if we get a worthwhile crop from them, I'll, um, I'll save some seed. As a rule, I don't save the seed from the melons. Um, I just buy fresh every year, and, and that's about one of the only varieties I'll spend on an F1, and that's getting a good, good crop of melons from them. Good seed to start with. Uh, plastic container in a tree, a little bit of water. Let the trees take the water as much as they want, and then pop that on. Now, I guarantee you within two or three days he'll be through. Uh, as I say, looking after them, a nice, good, deep, rich compost. Um, you can feed with a seaweed fertilizer, or you can go back on the uh, tomato feed, a comfrey, anything like that. Keep them well fed. Um, plenty, of, plenty of moisture on them, as long as they're free draining. Um, and what I like to do with my melons is give them a good, um, same as what I do with my tomatoes, give them a good mulch or leaf mould uh, around about the beginning to the end of June. And it keeps the roots nice and cool, keeps the moisture in, uh, stops from getting too hot, and you should get a crop and crop. But as I say, I'll keep you updated on them as they grow. Um, uh, things have been galloping away this week in the greenhouse. Um, if you remember the uh, the Nimbus tomatoes that I sown about uh, six weeks ago, this was a trial variety. Um, as you can see, ceiling leaves still on there. And that just tells you that uh, there's been no check, uh, no stop at all. They've been grown correctly, right temperatures, right moisture, and the right light. I'm always banging on about that, make sure you've got plenty of light, because I see pictures on the internet of, of plants struggling away, um, tall, leggy. As long as you've got your light, plenty of light, you know, you shouldn't have that problem. But uh, to me, it's a first-rate tomato. And, of course, when you start picking away the little side shoots on them, smell oh that's absolutely fantastic and that smell has been with me uh, since I was eight year old uh, since my dad first started taking us to the garden and we started snapping leaves off the tomato plants and that smell just stops with me for the rest of your life it's uh, absolutely fantastic I love it and that's what keeps me going in the garden the grown um, 
One of these I'll keep because uh, I'll go and go outside. I'm going to grow one of these outside, and the other two will just go up the garden. If they do, do turn out to be a nice variety, um, what I'll do is I'll keep one tomato back and I'll take some seed from it. It's not enough on Friday, so I'm uh, I'm quite happy with that just to try them. And that one's Nimbus, um, so it's one to look out for. Um, if it's any good, I might prop for the show bench, get a nice a nice truss off them. We'll see. Uh, Gardeners delight, they're romping away. Of course, they're a nice cherry tomato. I, look, I grow them every year. I grow about a dozen of these. And once again, just the, the little suckers just coming on. And they, that, that smell is just unbelievable. I love it. But um, as I say, the Nimbus, I've got some massive American ones, Spanish ones up the garden. They must be planted out this week. Yeah, this weekend we'll probably get them done. And there we go. There we go. Um, <coughs> small canary tomatoes. Smaller again. Planted later. But what I don't want to do is to have a glut of tomatoes all at the same time. So I like to just thin them down and grow them in sections a bit at a time. Now I've just finished potting off um, the last of the money maker and they're in small cups. They'll be ready at the end of this month for to go into a cold greenhouse. So as I say, not everything comes at once. They're just taking their time, nice and steady. Once again, seedling leaves on. If you go and get tomatoes or you're buying tomatoes, just check and make sure them seedling leaves are on. And that'll tell you it's been well grown. It's had no checks, um, no cold spells. What I will show you tomorrow when we go to the allotment, because I'm going up there to do a few um, stoppings or pinching or nipping or cutting or topping, whatever you want to call it, uh, as the croissants. <coughs> so I'll make a video up there tomorrow and then get this online. But we'll, I'll show you some of the bigger tomatoes up there. Um, <coughs> we'll get them planted out. And if you remember about three videos ago, I grew some uh, really early tomatoes in January and I got them to about that size. Now I took them up the garden and I told you I would I would take them up the garden and put them in a cold greenhouse. Now I'll show you them six tomatoes tomorrow and uh, what a difference between a nice fresh green tomato that's been grown properly and the six that are up there. They are grown but they're shabby. They're terrible, they're dark, they're blue and they will never reach a decent enough tomato to get a good crop from. And as I say, that's what it's all about. It's just uh, it's grown your tomatoes properly. Um, it's like any other plant, you grow it properly, get the right conditions, and you shouldn't have any problems. But uh, yeah, I'm happy with that. I've got, uh, as I say, I've gotten my melons in, uh, I've gotten the Lediva cucumbers in. <coughs> I'm nearly caught up on my tomatoes. I've got loads of rope, a lot of loads of pot knotted up there. But um, as I say, it's all about time. It's getting up there when I can and get started. Um, I'm hoping to get started on the, as I say, on the tomatoes this weekend. Uh, normally the first week in there, I like to crack on with them and get them, um, get them started to plant out. Now the melons and the cucumbers, why I put them in this month is because the first week in there, excuse me, your temperatures are up, um, your lights, you're getting fantastic light now, your, your temperatures are up. And what these don't need is a, is a cold spell. So that's why they're in here. I'll come back down this evening and I'm going to pop the heater back on. Now, it'll only raise the temperature a couple of degrees in here. It's just in case we get a frost like we did this morning. So it'll just keep it there uh, on about 45 in here in the evening, which is fine. Nothing's going to get a check from that. Um, putting the cucumbers and putting the melon seed in now, you're going to give them a good four weeks to get a nice, good, solid plant. And uh, by then, yeah, at the end of May, beginning of June, and that's when we like to start planting ours up here in the northeast. No sooner than that. Never any sooner than that. Because, uh, as I say, the, the temperatures can change fantastic up, up here as quick as that, you know. Um, from red hot one day like we had last weekend, we had two lovely days, and the next day it was freezing cold, pouring of rain. So, you know, it's, um, and it's the same all over the country, you know. It's, uh, we've, we've got some of the, the best weather, I would say. Um, for a country, you know, look, uh, it changes so much. But we're that diverse, we can grow so many different crops. Um, you know, I don't mind the cold spells, but I love it when the summer comes and we can start getting all planted out. We've got lots to do in the garden. Uh, Roger's been up there today. He's, he's banked all the early taties up um, in the big tunnel. So by the end of this month, uh, we'll be starting to, to crop from that early tunnel. 
and tomorrow what I'm going to do is I'm going to sow a sweet corn. I'm never in a hurry to sow the sweet corn, but because I've got four, five weeks to go now before them titties are cleared from the tunnel, and then my sweet corn will follow them. What I will do is just before planting out them, uh, fortnight before I'm going to plant some runner beans or some uh, green beans, and I'm going to gr grow the green beans alongside the, uh, the sweet corn. I did last year, but what I did, I planted the seed down the side of the sweet corn, and of course with the sweet corn galloping away, it overshadowed the underneath, and uh, the seeds didn't grow as well. So what I'm going to do this year, I'm going to try another method. I'm going to try growing the, the green beans in a single pot first, and then just plant them alongside the, uh, the sweet corn once I get a hold, so we should get two crops of that. And of course, uh, the nitrogen from the beans feeds the sweet corn, and if I've got any spare squashes, I'll put the squashes on the floor of the greenhouse, which gives you your, your three sisters. So that's the um, that's a plan for the day. Oh, start get the melons in, get the cucumbers in. Um, I'm not going to borrow morrows this year. I'm not going to be borrowed with them um, zucchis or any of them. I'm going to uh, I've got enough on my plate at the moment, so I'm going to cut a lot of that stuff out uh, for the show. And I'm just going to concentrate on the, on what I've got. Um, I've got enough to be getting on with it in the moment. Once I get myself back to fitness, I'll be I'll be over the moon. I'll be fine. Um, lots of comments on the uh, on the sunflower challenges. Uh, everybody's getting theirs grown great. Well, uh, I'm going to start feeding mine. I've never had any extra feed, but I've got a bit of yellowing on the ceiling leaves. If you can see the bottom there. So that's been grown correct. Uh, not over watered, not over fed. It's just a nice strong little plant. So I'm going to start giving that a bit of nettle juice tomorrow. I'll probably take that up the garden. I'm not going to repot it just yet. It'll go in a nice cool greenhouse. There's still a little bit of warmth in here. But I'll put that in a nice cool spot. Um, just keeping an eye on it for any pests, green fly, any bugs on them. And uh, we'll give them a little soapy spray if, if, if need be. But apart from that, everything's grown great. We're getting the last of the seeds in. As I say, my sweet corn goes in tomorrow. And I think that's just about, I've got a few more flower seeds to print, but uh, that's it. That's a finish of the soon for uh, for this month anyway. I will be starting next month, of course, the primulas, primroses, um, sweet williams and stuff like that for the uh, for the autumn. We'll probably start in June, July, but, but uh, that's a couple of months away now. But uh, yeah, I'll get up the garden tomorrow, get up the plot tomorrow, and we'll get uh, we'll get stuck into these croissants. I've got some uh, sweet peas to bring down. I will be planting the sweet peas out this weekend. Because I think the last of the frosts over now, or I hope there will be anyway. And uh, you can see by the, the size of my sweet peas, they're absolutely massive. The pots are now full of root, so that's the time I like to plant them out. Get them in there now, and they'll just romp away. A couple of, uh, couple of perches here, a couple of trees, I'll grow them up there, and they'll be well away, no problem. A um, few new subscribers on our, on our channels. Um, Pat Johnson from Scotland, uh, from the Highlands, and a few of our family. Well, welcome, welcome to the plot, and uh, welcome to our YouTube channel. It's uh, it's nice to see uh, people from north of the border. We've got quite a few of you up there in Scotland now, and I think you're from North Uist or Uist, North Uist, how they pronounce it. Uh, lovely little spot up there in the Highlands. But welcome anyway. Um, we're glad to see you enjoying it. So we must be doing something right. We just hope we're giving you some. Great ideas. Uh, I noticed a couple of points about your raised beds yeah, you, that you were trying with your strawberries. And I think raised beds is a fantastic idea. I've uh, I've had my beds raised in the in the polytunnels for ten years now. Nice deep bed, two foot deep. You can actually get your arm and it can go right down elbow deep into mine. The compost is that nice and fresh and fi uh, pri primal that uh, you can get your arm well into it, and I love it. And that's just with plenty of good horse manure, as I say, plenty of seaweed, uh, plenty of um, organic compost from the garden. Feed your soil first, and then worry about your plants. You get that soil built up, and get it the way you want it, and you'll be able to grow anything. But uh, that's the way we look at it anyway. But uh, yeah, thanks for all the new subscribers. We're, uh, we're glad you're enjoying it. Uh, we'll get up the garden tomorrow, like I say, we'll get stuck into these croissants, and we'll get them stopped. Um, I'm not going to be shown this year, but uh, what I will do, I'll still go through the, the motions of what I, 
would have been doing if I had been showing them. I'm a bit late now, so um, but no doubt I've got the stock for next year, and that's all I'm worried about. I'm well pleased with that. But uh, for the time being, um, I'll let it go for now. I'll get myself up the plot tomorrow, and we'll get these uh, croissants sorted out, and I'll show you around and what we're what we're doing up there for the time being, and what we're doing at the moment. Okay. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all again. Well, good afternoon everybody, um, I've managed to get myself up the plot and uh, after a really cold start this morning it's, uh, the sunshine's come out and it's absolutely fabulous absolutely baking up here but um, I've been busy just trying to check the strawberries, a little bit dry there just taking the pots out, I've got the pots in the centre of the baskets it's uh, it's moist down below, it's nice and moist down below so I'm not, I'm not too worried about them at the moment. Um, what I will do tomorrow, I think, um, I'll give them the first drink of uh, seaweed. Uh, some lovely little strawberries coming on there. I'm well pleased with them. Good hands, plenty of fruit, and well fertilised. As I say, they've all been well pollinated. So I'm, I'm really pleased the way they're grown. The ones in the bigger tunnel next door are getting a lot better. Uh, but yep, yeah, we've been here this morning, me and Roger, and, uh, and of course we've managed to get quite a bit done. Uh, I'm well pleased with that. Most of our summer cabbage, our spring cabbage has been uh, getting ate up as, we, as we've went along the last couple of weeks. So we've managed to clear two spots, enough for two rows down here this morning. And we're getting all the pegs in ready, all the canes are in now. And what we'll be doing tomorrow is uh, planting out at least two rows of, uh, of our giant tomatoes. They, they must go in. Uh, as, I, as I said yesterday, um, I'm quite happy with it. The way tomatoes are going down home, but uh, these ones, yeah, they, they must go in. Up there. I've got to get, I've got to get started on these. I'm really pleased the way they're growing this year. Um, nice, strong little plants. As again, these are in paint pots, but the uh, ceiling leaves are still there. As I keep saying, as long as you've got your ceiling leaves, you know you've had a good, strong plant. It's been well grown, um, and suckers off. That smell has always there. It's absolutely beautiful. Well pleased with that. And of course, as I say, a lovely strong little plants. And these are the little the little canary tomatoes, the Spanish ones. Now they're on and off like a money maker. About the same size as a money maker, just just a nice size. I have got money maker plants in there which I'll be planting out. But I like to use them as a backup. Uh, same as my alicante. They're a good hardy outdoor variety that you can grow outdoors if you've got a sheltered spot, so I like to keep them till last. And what, what they'll do is they'll produce the last fruits of the year right up till sometimes about November. Um, so we'll, we'll, they're the last tomatoes that we planted out. But I've got there, of course. And these have been grown nice and cold. Um, giant American tomatoes, and they're beautiful. I'm well pleased with them. I've slowed them right down this year. They, they were a bit laggy last year. And of course, they were under the, uh, the strawberry beds. Um, the strawberry buckets last year, as it says in a couple of my videos say, previous, it could have been the effects of the strawberry buckets shading and, and making them uh, pull up a little bit. But uh, I've grown these as cool as what I can this year. As you can see, they're a really long, strong, nice, strong plant. And uh, what I like to do is just go through them, take all the little suckers off them. As I say, that smell, oh, it's absolutely beautiful. But they'll be planted right down to the first set of leaves tomorrow. Um, well, these are the only things I'll plant deeper than what they are in the pots. Uh, reason being, you'll get a nice root system coming from, we'll strip the bottom um, flags away, even the, even the seedling leaves. We'll pull them away, and what we'll do, we'll bury it right down to the first set of two leaves. And that'll give a bit extra root system. Uh, the only trouble we'll have with burying them a bit deeper is you've got to watch when you're watering. Do not water directly on the plant when they're at this stage. Always water around them and that way you'll not suffer any neck rot which is uh, one of the things that's uh, really troublesome with tomatoes cucumbers all the squash families you get too much water around the base of the root and you've got problems um, with, the, with, the, with them dying off and they're uh, just falling over with neck rot um, when you are watering try to water around the plants and of course when you when you up water from watering can you're not spreading any um, soil bone diseases with splashing, so as I say, I like to use the whippy hoses there on 
And what we'll do, we'll just turn the whippy hose on, it'll soak the whole bed, and keep it nice and moist for the tomatoes. But, yeah. Well pleased with them. So I've got uh, one, two varieties, and of course my old favourite, uh, which is the Gardener's Delight, the little cherry tums. I grow these every year, once again. It's a good, long, good, strong little plant. I'm well pleased with them. It smells absolutely fantastic. So that's uh, the job for Roger to do tomorrow morning. He's going to get started with that. All I've done is put a bit of lime on the beds. We'll just lightly rake it in tomorrow. Put the weepy hoses on, soak in the beds tonight, and then tomorrow morning we'll be able to get them planted out. So that's the first stage. I'm well chuffed. Strawberries are growing well here, and my first tomatoes will be going in. A lot more room for some lettuce to go in, so we'll, uh, we'll put them in later on. But uh, for the time being, I'm going to pop next door and show you how to get on with the croissants. So Right, well, okay, well, I hope the sun isn't going to be too bright uh, this afternoon. It's uh, the way it's shining at the moment. I may be facing the camera the wrong way, but I'm going to try anyway. Right, and uh, there's my me, um, me Paul Rochester leaks, uh, all in the big uh, three litre buckets. I'm pretty pleased with them the way they've come. Not, not as big as what some of them are on the, uh, on the internet, but uh, no, I'm well pleased with them. They're coming on canny. Uh, as I say, this afternoon, it was mainly on about getting the. Uh, Get my croissant sorted out and uh, trying to get the sweet peas and I down home. Uh, hopefully, uh, this weekend, it's um, the weather's forecast to be nice. That's if I get it right. But if I do, I'll be well chuffed. Um, okay, so if you remember the cuttings that we took uh, just a couple of weeks back, uh, these are my own stock the, the Yellow Max Riley, Bronze Max Riley, and of course the Liverpool Festival. Now, to me they are fantastic and that as far as what they should have been but uh, they're a lovely little plant I'm not going to bother stopping these ones just yet because they're, they're just at the size um, where they nearly filled their roots nearly filled their pots I'll just check them in on the safe side and of course yeah absolutely beautiful nice white root and a full pot so I never put on any earlier than that so these will get one more pot in uh, as I say I'll probably not plant up until the end of May so I'm going to leave them for another couple of days until I do pot them up and then I'll, I'll stop them. But I do want to stop with some of the earlier ones. And of course there's the Liverpool Festival. It's uh, just a cutting I've taken this year, um, a couple of weeks back. And now we're going to, we're going to stop them. Now the idea of stopping them is just uh, nipping the top out. Uh, a lot of people will be wondering why we stop the plant. Well if you're going to show flowers, um, it's a must because it's um, it's your important time when you, you actually knit the top out in order to produce the side shoots and the heads of flowers that you want. But by stopping at a certain time, you have your flowers ready for the shows. Your shows might be early September, mid September, or late September. So you've got stopping dates um, for each variety. Um, Liverpool Festival is usually around about the 10th of May, but I'm not going to bother showing, so I'm stopping it now. And all I've did is knit the top out, and within a couple of weeks' time, that will start sending new buds out from the axles where you've actually nipped the top out. I usually flower mine three up. You may get three, four, five buds coming up, new buds with new heads on. And I'll wait until they get two or three inches high and I'll cut them back to about three heads and flower them three up. So you get three beautiful new flowers on that one plant. Um, you can let a lot more go. As I say, the idea of stopping them is to get your, get your plants in flower for your show dates when you want. But if you're not showing, and if you don't want to stop them, just leave them. They will break by themselves naturally, yeah, especially the garden sprays. They just, once they get up a certain height, you'll see the tendrils, the, the, the side shoots come away, and uh, they'll send up multiple heads, and yeah, they'll just break away naturally. But for these ones, for the show ones, we'll all have our different stopping dates, so I like to go around them, give them a good clean up, make sure they're nice and clean. That's not a, not a thing on there, no green fly, any pieces, anything. Nice and clean, so I'm well pleased with that. I've got plenty of rhubarb up there. Uh, some nice new stems coming up with some leaves, so if I'm pushed, I can make a little rhubarb juice up and give them a spray that with some soapy water, and that'll fit the little buggers. But uh, for the time being, they're lovely and clean. I'm well pleased with them. That's the, um, now these are a must, they've got to go up. Um, if I had some transport, I'll be getting these up the day. I'll just put me crutch on to one side and I'll show you how. Now these are me autumn sown sweet peas and they're absolutely fantastic. They're now at the height 
um, we are like transplanting. Um, these were sown in September, as I say, and if you look at the root ball, well, this has everything for it. Absolutely fantastic, it's absolutely full of roots. All I'll do is I'll tease some of that away and that will plant out into my garden and you'll get a first class um, show of sweet peas. All I did with these, if you remember, they were sown in the September and they kept really cold, as cold as possible. Yeah, some of the temperatures in the year don't mind us in the winter. Yeah, but they struggle on and struggle on and then in, in the January, late January, early February, I just pinched the tops out. Uh, down at the bottom here, let them go at about three or four leaves, pit nip the tops out, and that's the uh, prevailing shoots that come up there. And actually, there's flower buds on there now, so the sooner I get them planted, the better. But I'm well pleased with them, they're well ahead of me, some of ones, nice strong young plants. They could have done with a bit of a cane in and a bit tying up with them. You know my situation at the moment, I've been struggling to, uh, to get back on my feet after having my accident, but um, that's what would have happened. Uh, there would have been a Canes in there and they would have been tied up. But you know, they're growing fine as they are in the basket, so I'm well pleased with them. So that's a sweet pea. They've got to be done. Uh, well, <laughs> need I say any more? The giant cabbage, they, they far too early to plant them out just yet, so I might have to pot them up again and uh, eat our buckets. So that'll be a, a mixture of uh, three, two, and one. That'll be um, compost from, this, from the garden. Yeah, multi purpose compost and some uh, horse manure mixed in, and I'll get them into big two litre pots the weekend. And they'll probably sit there for a couple of weeks. As I say, there's some absolutely beautiful, they're as big as the, some of the lands on the show, but you know, first class cabbage, these are the Cornish giants. So I'll, I'll probably put them up this weekend if I get paid. Uh, I've already marked about 10 things that need attention this weekend. But uh, yeah, at the moment, I'm well pleased, as I say. Uh, Croissants, idea, uh, and that's something I've got. Lona wood, now it's a beautiful waiting curve. So these will be stopped. So once again, it's just taking the top wood and just pinching him out. Can use them for cuttings if you wanted. Uh, you could take them farther down the stair, but I'll let you just nip the top stem out. Now these, will, these will all be potted up this weekend, um, and they get a cane and get a thin uh, split bamboo cane and a tire on. And then we'll uh, we'll probably pot them up at the end of the month. As I say, the pots are well full of roots, I'm well chuffed with that, well grown. Um, and that was uh, that was a priority. Getting up, get these stopped. I'll go through them all later on and make sure they're all done. Just got to uh, be very careful because I'm up here by myself. And I don't no accidents. Right, so there we are. That's the first hand. Absolutely horrendous. If you remember the tomatoes that are brought up nice and slow in the nice cool heat in January in February, I uh, potted them up in the March and then I brought them up here at the beginning of April. And look at the state of them, absolutely horrendous. So if you're going to the shops and you pick a tomato up like that, I would throw it away. Tell the manager to stick it. Um, they're absolutely horrendous. They're blue, they're, sh they're, sh they're shrunken, there's uh, the yellow one of the leaves, unfed. Um, too much cold temperatures, stunted growth, and that's what you get for bringing your tomatoes up in a cold greenhouse too early. They should be just, you don't have to have stacks of heat on for tomatoes as long as they're frost free. And uh, as I say, I never have made temperatures over 55, I can help it down home. I'll, um, I'll open the windows and the doors as soon as it reaches the 60 mark and get the fresh air in. But uh, you know what my tomato plants are like, but these are the ones I thought I'd just show you. The, the trial six, if you go back all three videos, when I first started sowing seed at the beginning of the year, and I said I would do a trial, and that's what you can expect of your tomatoes if you bring them up too early. Now there, I go nowhere but the bin. Uh, compost bin that is. So, that's one of my uh, little trials this year, that I thought I would show you. Well pleased, well ahead, with the baskets hanging up in here. Um, and now we can just pop into the little tunnel next door and I'll just uh, give you a quick Right, here we are. Just a quick look around, see how we've been getting on. Oh, how Roger's been getting on, I should say. Here's our, our big boys, our third year strawberries. 
in the big buckets and they well they're romping away there's loads of fruit hanging on them well pleased with them uh, this is what secondary potatoes um, the world yeah now these will come out uh, in about fortnight's time they're getting a bit big there now so what we'll do with these we'll just carry on topping them up with compost on the way around uh, and they'll go outside in about a fortnight's time um, and just grow on in there there's our first earlies here, which of course is our, our Swift and our, our um, Casablanca. Absolutely beautiful uh, potatoes. Really grown well, pleased with them. Our garlics over the back there, they're just rumping away. I'm, I'm well pleased with them. Uh, nice and cool, they've all been banked up for a job. Spent hours yesterday banking these up. That's the potatoes. And uh, I'm really pleased with them. Well chuffed for them. And a fantastic job. But, uh, as I say, our tunnels starting to get there. Tunnels, tunnels are starting to get filled up a bit there now. But the, as you can see, the uh, the potatoes are looking really well. I'm well chuffed for them. And as for strawberries, well, uh, say no more. There's the big boys there. They're absolutely beautiful. Tons of fruit on. Absolutely gorgeous. They're a little bit a um, little bit drier the night, but as I say. The, uh, the temperatures in the greenhouse here, and in the tunnels here this afternoon, just without a little bit of sunshine, it's, uh, they've just shut up. So I'm going to open both these doors, and hopefully whoever comes along tonight, I'll, uh, I'll lock them up. I've got uh, plenty of tomatoes up ahead there. They're still growing away strongly. I think that's money maker up on the top there. And there's some, uh, of course, for cherry tomatoes. We love growing them. But uh, yeah, well pleased the way things have been grown. Uh, as I say, I haven't been able to get as much done as I would have liked this year, but um, we will get there. We'll get ourselves back on my, on my feet and uh, working on it for next year. But um, yeah, it was just a quick update on the garden. Um, I'm going to go outside tomorrow and uh, Thursday and Friday with the camera in the garden and I'll show you how we're getting on in the garden. We have our main crop potatoes to start on soon. So I'm hoping to get them done maybe it's Friday or Saturday and then we'll have parsnips and carrots to, to sort out. But there, uh, lots to do. Keep an eye on our fruit trees, give them a feed, but I'll do all that in the next video. So for the time being, um, thanks for subscribing, thanks for all the new subscribers. I hope you yeah, enjoy having a walk around the tunnels with us today. And just a little bit of info on, like I say, on the, on the croissants. Uh, dahlias will be in the next one, I'm going to have to start taking some cuttings of the dahlias. So I'll, uh, I'll maybe just look at that in the next day, week or two. I know I'm late, but um, we'll get there. Okay, so thanks for, for watching. Keep on sharing, keep on subscribing, and I'll see you all again soon in the next video. Okay, thanks for now.